Yep. Is that one of the new to put on? Good morning. Yeah. We're here for the one year daily Bible study. I have a feeling this past week as I've been recording live that um, I've had some interference with our internet connection. Um, Kim and I was going back, looking back through the recordings for this week and they're showing on my news feed, but they're, I don't, I'm not real sure that they're public. Um, so we've, we've got some changes going on around here with our internet service. We're in the process one of these days of having you verse and I'm grateful for that. But I apologize if some of the um, Bible studies haven't been broadcast properly. So um, doing the best that I know how to do, and uh, God makes up the rest. So I appreciate you guys being faithful. Appreciate you guys being patient with me. This morning's August the 31st of 2017, and a week ago today, I, with heartfelt sympathy, uh, shared with you that part of my extended family in Wisconsin uh, had lost a family member, a 32-year-old that had three children at home and a loving wife, and he just didn't wake up. <clears throat> he didn't. He went to sleep and didn't wake up. And you know how hard that was. And the scriptures that we read that particular day was so profound. Well, today is uh, the day of his funeral. And his mother-in-law and I have been conversing this morning through texting um, as we amazingly read the scriptures together. I, it was the timing is just God's timing is always perfect. And so here I am reading my scriptures for the day. She's reading her scriptures for the day. And then the texts start coming back and forth about the timing of the scriptures today. So a, a funeral for a 32-year-old that was healthy, um, that had three babies at home, a loving wife at home. You know, what, what can you say? What is there to say at times like that? And, um, you know, we, we think about what we're going through, and we think our life is rough, and we think that the problems we have are great. And if you just look around, you can always find somebody that has far, far worse problems than you have. And it puts things in perspective for you. I mean, it doesn't change the fact that yes, we in our lives have issues, we have problems, we have things that are, are tough to deal with. Um, but when, when you stop and put it in perspective and, you know, the problems and the struggles you have versus waking up one morning and your 32-year-old husband isn't breathing, mm, you know. And so, and then um, the tendencies we have when we go through th bad things. I, I know, I, I don't believe there's a person has ever been born or ever will be born that at some point in their life doesn't struggle with the question of why. Why? And, you know, we're in Job. We're, we're Job 37 through 39 right now. Um, <laughs> and, and God answers Job. So Job, who God said um, was blameless and who had integrity, lived his life with integrity. Job had his children killed by the enemy. He had everything he owned destroyed, and even still, God said, how about my man Job? He's uh, blameless. He lives with integrity, and so then his physical health was attacked, short of death, but all the way up to death, and Job has been suffering physically, and Job cried out. Job had three friends that came that stirred the pot, quite frankly. Um, I, I personally, as I read through Job, can't see that his friends brought him any comfort. I pray, oh Lord, don't let that be me, ever. When I'm trying to comfort somebody, I hope I'm not making it worse. Uh, Job cries out and says that he wishes he'd never been born. And um, he wishes he could see God face to face to ask him, you know, why this has happened to him. 
and this is God's answer. Um, then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. I find it interesting that God was in the whirlwind. You know how often the Holy Spirit is referred to in the scriptures as a wind or as a whisper? Mm. Who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Going from, how about my man Job? He is blameless. He lives his life with integrity. To who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Brace yourself like a man, because I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? What supports its foundations and who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who kept the sea inside its boundaries as it burst from the womb and as I clothed it with clouds and wrapped it in thick darkness? For I locked it behind barred gates, limiting its shores. I said, this, this far and no farther will you come. Here your proud waves must stop. Have you ever commanded the morning to appear and caused the dawn to rise in the east? Have you made daylight spread to the ends of the earth to bring an end to the night's wickedness? So, you know, in my life right now today, I'm loving on a family who's lost a 32-year-old father and husband. Um, in your life today, you're dealing with this issue and that issue and this issue and this heartache and that heartache. And as I said, I believe every last one of us has asked why at times. And we read these scriptures and we realize, I mean, the beauty of this is it reinforces what he's been telling us from the beginning all the way to the end of his Bible. He's telling us, I am God. You can't comprehend me. There is no way you can know. I am above all that, that you can see or hear or feel. I am God. My ways are not your ways. And then he's really and truly <laughs> being as blunt with Job. Who are you to question? I'm God. And I just find those words so comforting when we're searching for answers, when we so desperately want to know, to know that it's okay that we don't know. It's okay that we don't even know what to say at certain times. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 4, 13, verses 5, 10, just continues. August the 31st. 2018, lay into rest a 32-year-old father and, and, and husband. And we open our book today, and there is Job about the whys, and here is 2 Corinthians about death. We've all known of somebody that passed away way too early. And I, I just want to, I just want to read it. <laughs> I, I, it's not very long. I'm going to read the whole thing. <clears throat> but we, Paul and his co-workers, continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to, him, to himself together with you. Now that's a promise. That is a promise to live, live by. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. You ever heard me say, never, ever give up? That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. See, the truth is, is I'll never die. 
My physical body will pass away, but I'll never die. What do I have to fear in death? What do we have to fear in death? And when we understand that, it puts a whole new perspective on things. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. As much as we may not understand what's happening, the troubles we have produces a glory that will outlast all of the troubles that we have. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze, gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. What is it that's troubling you today? I mean, what is it that's on your heart so heavy today? We look past those things. I had somebody call me yesterday, very, very dear friend of mine called me yesterday and said, Elizabeth, I'm under attack. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I, I, I said a, a, a very quick inward prayer. And I said, get your eyes back on Christ. Close your eyes and take your eyes off of the physical and put it back on the Christ that's in you and only see him. Only see him. And she said, I've been looking at both, haven't I? So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. For we know that when this earthly body we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by humans. See, Christian is in that heavenly body now. His earthly body is being, being laid to rest today, but his heavenly body is where he now resides. We grow weary in our present bodies. We grow weary in our present bodies. Now see, that's a spiritual thing. That's not a physical thing. You can't read that and say that Christian wanted to leave his wife and three kids. We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. But our spirit man longs, longs for the eternal. It longs for the things in heaven. We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. We want to know what heaven's like? Do we want to know what heaven's like? All we have to do is read. All we have to do is, is close our eyes and listen. He's telling us all these things. See, he's told us all these things since the beginning of time. But he knew in our physical flesh we would struggle to hear. There's nothing written here that he hasn't already spoken to us. We just struggle to hear, so he wrote it down for us. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. It's not that, that Christian wanted to die. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself has prepared us for this. And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. Mm. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we're not at home with the Lord. For we live by believing, not by seeing. We live by faith, not by sight. Another translation would say. For we live by believing, not by seeing. All hell rages around you. I, I, by faith, I know all is well. Because I'm his. I'm his. Let the storm rage. I'm in peace. I can sleep at the bottom of the boat. Yes, we are fully confident, and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. 
So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. Mm. So I, I uh, thank God. I thank God that that mother-in-law opened up the book and got to read such comforting words. And the Bible, we just read in the last week that as we are comforted, we are able to comfort. And she'll be able to comfort um, her daughter, her grandbabies. She'll be able to comfort Christian's family. We will be able to comfort ourselves when we need comfort. But more importantly, we'll be able to comfort the others, the one that God sends us in front of us. When they don't know what to say, they don't know what to do, they don't know what to think, we love. And when we love, peace reigns. When we step outside of love, chaos reigns. But when we step forward in love, when we don't know what to do, we don't know what to say, we just are, we, we just be, we just love. You won't know the side of heaven, how powerful that is. Thank you all for joining me and thank you for praying for the Greenwald family today. Um, your prayers have gotten them through. I got many, many thank yous uh, last week when I asked you on a week ago today to join together with me in praying for this family. At that time, I didn't know their last name, but it's the Greenwald family. So thank you guys so much for praying.